Hey, everybody. Merry Christmas-ish. Um, <laughs> it's not really Christmas, but then again, tomorrow really isn't my birthday, and I'm having my birthday party. But this is the last show of 2021, and I can't wait to say goodbye to 2021. Um, so, you know, we won't be here for New Year's, so this is kind of like the Christmas New Year's show. But I want to thank you and start by saying thank you for supporting us and tuning in and sharing and, and just being like my street team. So thank you so much. Um, you're listening to Between the Sheets, the first and third Friday of every month here on the United Broadcasting Network. You can call us, 323-524-2599. Today's show is about, well, we're going to start with love and agreements and that's kind of what we're going to start with. And then I don't know where the hell we're going to go. Um, I really don't. It's just the most strangest thing how we run this show. But um, I don't know. I mean, and, and, you know, and I stopped coming up with topics because I realized I would come in and do all this homework with topics. And we would never get we'd start with the first one and then it was a running train. So I thought, you know what? Fuck it. It will be just normal conversation and that's what will happen but you can follow me on instagram qte brat and um follow the youtube channel uh, between the sheets with gay and bruno and the facebook page between the sheets with gay and bruno we have some old and new familiar faces um and i'll just get right on to it we'll start with to the right of me at the very end uh we have margie duran joining us again in studio yeah. We have Mara Shane. Hi. With her stuff thing. Christmassy. Chris, yes. this, this stuff. That's right. This stuff. She Doesn't she look like a little, I'm trying to think. Snow bunny. Snow bunny. Yes. Thank you. Snow oh, bunny. Was, that's exactly what came to mind. <laughs> um, on my left, I have Cara Noble. Hello, everybody. Hello. She didn't bring her poppers Crackers. What are they? Poppers? Crackers. <laughs> crackers. You know what poppers are, right? I know what poppers are. <laughs> are we doing poppers tonight? No. Oh no. my. Are we gonna have a group orgy? Just you know, saying. Are you no, taking? Oh, excuse me. Are you taking over the mic again? <laughs> <laughs> it's no. my show. Oh, um, no. Then we have Roxanne Rosen in the corner. Hi everyone. We have Tony in studio dealing with the boards Hello. tonight. Tony Tony. It was his birthday the other day, oh, so happy, happy belated. belated. Happy belated. Um, happy and then on Zoomy Zoom we have Ronnie Louisa. Hey, Ronnie. Hi, we Ronnie. have Cheryl Murphy. Hey, guys. Great Love to be here. Cheryl. Great to and see you. Back, hey, Cheryl. And back, back, just way back, we have someone um, in that's been in the studio. I've been on her show, and everybody knows her, and it's Sheena Metal. Hey, Hi, guys. Sheena. Hey, Sheena. aren't you coming up with your two-year anniversary with, your, with Lynn? Yes, January 30th. Yep. Wow, it doesn't feel like two it years. It doesn't feel like two Gosh. years at all. Is, um, it, is this a relationship we're talking about? Yes, or? yes. Hey, good, lovely. Forever. Do we know Lynn? Car, we met at your house. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> remember remember, I had the 12 birthday parties in 2019? Yes. Yeah. There was the large one that was not at your house, and then there was the intimate gathering with, like, my closest friends. Your closest lesbian friends. Exactly. I, remember, I love it. And Best so food she, ever. So Lynn was there. And then Sheena was not supposed to be there. I mean, I invited her, but she wasn't supposed to be there because she had said she wasn't, and she swung by the house, mm -hmm. oh. and that's where her and Lynn connected. Really? Wow. Oh. Uh, my what? house? I came yes. with a bottle of wine, and I left with a soulmate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fabulous. Great. So um, what else is going on? Um... I'm trying to think. There was something that I was just going to say. You're not coming to my party tomorrow? Is that the deal, Sheena Metal? <gasps> I'm out of town. I'm so sorry. I would love to. I hate that I'm going to miss it. Mm. Okay. I thought maybe I was going to meet my second wife, so I feel like I'm really <laughs> ripped off There's now. nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with polyam po po what is it called? Polyamory. 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 <laughs> and that talks so about love, love, and that goes into agreements. Wow. I want to hear all about this. <laughs> That goes into love and agreement. I don't know about what? two wives. I, I know, but what I didn't know Sheena was into this. That's what? cool. No, 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 no she's, she's joking. She's, she's no joking. Oh, no, no, she's no judging. No judgment. She's just joking. <laughs> you never know. This just okay. joking, but that I took. No judgment. I think it sounds like a lot of fun, but it's hard enough to keep track of one soulmate. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> more than one one. But true. Sheena, am I not correct in that there is, and Cheryl, you can also chime in because you both well, are. Do. That there, that you can have more than one soulmate in your life, and it doesn't necessarily mean that every soulmate 
is a romantic person. Is, Correct. Is, am I correct on that? Yes. Uh-huh. Right. Oh, well, that is, is so twin true. Flame? 100%. Oh, I'm wondering. Soulmates, well, this is it. You do. Twin flame, right, Cheryl? Yeah. Yeah. You know, soulmates. You know, you could not be friends with a soulmate, but they came in to teach you a lesson, have a contract. So you can have soulmates for a season, a reason, a lifetime, mm. and they're not always love relationships. Like you said, you might uh, not get along with them very well, but the lessons you learn are uh, truly amazing. So yeah, soulmates in animals too. I think animals, oh, you know, can yes. be your best friend can be a soulmate, right? Yes. Yeah. Cheryl and Sheena, how do you know or do you know if you're someone's soulmate? Not that they're yours and they're there to teach you, but that you're there to teach them. Well, if you're if they're yours, then you're, you're also them. them. Yeah, they're they're hand part of hand. your soul family. That so when oh. we're home, which is what some people call heaven, I call home. Um, we have a soul family, just like we have a family on earth. And oftentimes, like Cheryl was saying, folks from your soul family will come in from life to life and have some kind of relationship with you, different relationship maybe every time for growth. And um, you'll recognize them right away because you know them when you're home, our, our unconscious is collective for every lifetime. And, um, and then, you know, they could be forever or they could just be for a moment. And, but if, they're, if, if you're there to teach them something, they're there to teach you something, right, Cheryl? True, absolutely. There's so much to learn, so much to give. We have, we're here for, we're here on Earth for so many reasons, for so many gifts. Yeah, we're 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 jam packing it in here. And yeah. what's the difference? Because I mean, I always get confused, and I always need a refresher. What's the difference between a soulmate and a twin flame? Oh, tricky one. I'll let you take that, Sheena. Okay, so a a twin flame is actually your like cosmic life partner. And uh, many folks believe you were actually made from the sa at the same time, which is where the term twin flame comes from. So when your everybody's soul is born at some time, right? Not your um, birthday. Souls are different ages. Uh, not necessarily on your birthday. Okay. When when your soul is born, not here but at home, um, however many lifetimes ago you were born, uh, your twin is born with you. So the tricky thing about a twin flame is that because your twins. You're not just here to learn from each other, but oftentimes you mirror each other, which means mm -hmm. like like mirror twins, right, on Earth. So you can be very alike in a lot of ways, and you can be completely opposite in other ways because you mirror each other. And when you meet in each lifetime, it inspires this sort of explosion of rapid healing in both of you, and you have to be ready for it. And sometimes one twin isn't ready, and that's why twins will meet Don't each other. Don't they call them the runner? Twins. Don't they call that's them right. the runners? Right. So, so it can take, um, they have to grow up to you to be ready for the relationship. And sometimes mm -hmm. twin flames go through that runner changer scenario, still in a relationship with each other. Sometimes they actually separate and go through it. And, um, and then hopefully if they're learning their lessons, right, they come back together, uh, in union. And the thing that's interesting about a twin flame is because they really are the other half of your soul you're not just here to learn from each other, but you're also here with a mission to do something beautiful for the world. Um, you're kind of like soul warriors, like wonder twins. When we were kids, wonder twin powers. You are truly wonder twins, but you have to get over all the running and the chasing and the malarkey and get to the point where you're in union in order to be able to um, to do that That rapid healing of the world. So it's it's kind of magic. And you see that when you hear stories of twin flames, it's it's very much about, um, you know, gosh, and then we met and we realized we were here to do this or we were here to do that. And it's it's really a beautiful thing, but it's 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 a challenge because it forces you to be all you can be. It forces you to heal. Human beings are very stubborn. We oftentimes don't want to heal. And it um, it's scary sometimes to be thrust into your higher human purpose. For healing that freaks people out and scares them too so you're saying that um, some people might pull away from it before they even get in a relationship yeah because sometimes the car it's just too much mm -hmm. it's too much is the recognition uh, too much like they recognize it and you re like do, do they not even recognize why they're running away it depends how in touch they are with themselves exactly. mm -hmm. but oftentimes they don't um because they know something is going on but they're terrified that it is making them feel like they have to change or move things inside of them or do some kind of spiritual work. 
and sometimes they know mm-hmm. but they mm-hmm. run anyhow because it's too much emotion yep i mean it, it's a lot of emotion. it's explosive i mean i i so I, I know i have one they're not aware mm-hmm. of it um mm-hmm. but they're not as in tune as i am and sure. you know and i'm hmm. confrontational you know what i mean i don't mind the explosions because i know with an explosion you know it's sort of like once an explosion then you know things get decimated and then things can regrow from it and that's the growth and some yeah. people are just they're just not in tune and i remember telling someone i you know i think you're my twin flame first of all i had no idea what this and then when i told <laughs> them they were horrified in denial um, you know, you can't be, you're not, you know, and it's, you know, and, you know, look, it is what it is, but, you know, we all grow and we'll, you know, do we ever always reconnect or connect with our twin flame? Maybe not. I mean, do you think in a lifetime we always meet that twin flame in every lifetime? You can talk, Margie. Yeah. No, I, I don't think we do. Well, Gian, why did you, why did that person feel horrified? Because it's think too scary. Interested. No, it's it's too emotionally scary. It's too emotionally scary. You're, you're talking about people. You talk. I'm talking about like people that are, as they say, emotionally unavailable. They're going to be emotionally mm-hmm. unavailable for me. Emotionally unavailable mm-hmm. for themselves. Mm-hmm. So if they're yeah. unemotionally available, they don't have that capacity to actually be open mm-hmm. to, you know, to risk it. To risk right. it, or even and, to right. process some right. of those big emotions that look really ugly to the world. You know, right. those look ugly to the world, but we've got to embrace them and work through them. And I think a lot of people are hesitant to that, especially right now with this love and light world. And speaking Thanks. of love, <laughs> speaking of love, um, you know, w- I, you know, again, you know, people are in relationships. I mean, I'm not. Uh, you're not. You're not. I'm not. You're not. And you're not. And then uh, <laughs> Cheryl, uh, Cheryl, Cheryl's not, not going to tell us, even if she I'm is. Not- but I'm happily single. Right. Happily single. Ronnie is in a relationship and Tony's in a relationship and Sheena's in a relationship. So here's the thing. When you get, and I'm, I've, I've been in long-term relationships, but I find it very interesting that when people get into a relationship, not all, I'm, I'm observing, mm-hmm. that they, cook, especially lesbians, they cocoon. They, they like cling and it's like this person is my priority which of course the partner has to be the priority but it does not mean to the expense that you diminish your friends or, or your anything else or anything doing. else yeah. your family mm-hmm. your friends your and life. I find it very interesting that people do do that I mean I've never done it you know but then I've always been pretty you know pretty Balanced. much no I you know agreements you know I am with my people I know who I am and I know I can change. There are things I need to change. But on the flip side, you know, when someone meets me, I don't do that courting bullshit where I become who they want me to be. Mm-hmm. You know, this mm-hmm. is who they want, and I'm going to play into no, it. No, you're then, always who you are. Yeah, and then we move in together, and it's like, what the fuck? How, who yeah. the fuck are you? You know what <laughs> I mean? I hear that so often with people, you know? So oh, true. I, I technically, when I meet someone, you, what you see is what you get. Don't ex- not expect me to change. Do not expect me to, you know, whatever. I will be respectful. If things have you have an issue, we'll have a discussion. And, you know, if something bothers you, I'll try my best to accommodate you, but not if it's like selling my soul because it's something that I vehemently don't want to agree to. So what do you think about people getting together and sort of cocooning and, 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 and you know, like some people are just such in a fantasy world because they go, this is what a relationship, straight and gay, supposed to look like. This is what my parents' relationship looked like. This is what a perfect relationship looks like. And I keep saying to people, that's perfect for them. Those relationships is perfect. That relationship is perfect for them. But you cannot mirror your relationship on somebody else's mm-hmm. relationship because it's two different people with two different things and everybody makes their own agreement. So let's discuss. Right, right. You can't sustain it. You can try to be something else, you know, for someone and you just, you can't sustain it. You, you, you have to stand in your truth and that's, and that can be scary, right? Being, you know, being vulnerable, right? Uh, you're talking but, about agreements. What do you mean? Agreements like, you Verbal. know, any kind of agreements, you know, like I, an agreement is like, I am fiercely independent. I have to have my friends. I have to have my friend time. It doesn't diminish 
that if I spend time with my friends, it doesn't take away from my relationship. My partner shouldn't be upset with it or jealous by it or feel that they're, you know, that I'm choosing my friends over them. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are just basic examples. So, But if it's things that I think in a relationship, obviously communication is important. And if there's something that there's an issue with that you, you know, it's communication. And it's bringing it up immediately because you can't be, you can't harbor, you shouldn't harbor upsetment or jealousy or any of this. It needs to be something that if it comes up, at least this is the way I, I try and do it. It's something that it comes up, you discuss it. See mm-hmm. where and why this person is feeling this way. Mm-hmm. Listen. You have to listen. Be an active listener. Don't judge. And then mm-hmm. you talk about maybe why you do this. And an agreement is a partner shouldn't have to change. You don't, I don't want to change my partner, and I don't want my partner changing me. So if there's an issue that we have, where can we meet in the middle? But you're assuming well, that people are ready to have that kind of conversation. A lot of people have yeah. to work a very long time to even get to the point where they can agree that they're going to tell each other the truth. Or Well, but that's what I'm saying. Yes. I am that person. Right off the bat, this is who I am. This is what I have on the table that if I'm interested. That must be hard for some people to deal with. And that's well, why I'm is, not with them. So. Exactly. The so thing is, Gayanne, most people when they start dating, courting, whatever you want to call it, whether you're heterosexual, or, or not, you always, they, it seems like someone's acquiescing mm-hmm. and they want the, the future possible in-laws, they want the future possible friends, their, uh, the circle of friends of, of who you're hooking up with or getting together with or forming a relationship with. Somebody always acquiesces and the truths, the agreements mm-hmm. aren't really made because somebody did not right. show their full self because they're in that la-la stage. Mm-hmm. And then a year or two later, three years later, eh, and it's funny that you say people cocoon because I see the cocooning at first, but then you have the, the, the couples that all of a sudden they're always out with other couples or else they're bored and they have nothing to say to each other. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I believe what you're talking about, Gayanne, is maturity and security mm-hmm. in communication. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to say, because I've dated a lot in my lifetime, about 95% of people just don't have it. Agreed. You know, they are, like what Kara said, they get scared. They're not ready. It takes them a long time. People like us, we are ready, and we're ready right now. And it's it's really about, for example, you know, there's someone that is in my life that doesn't like going out much and likes going to bed early. And I l- am like you. I right. want my friend time. That must be really hard. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. but, but, you know, the person is mature and secure and says you go out with your friends and you have a good time and you know what i want to hear all about it in the morning and oh, it's just nice. so yeah. wonderful well and that is why i mean seriously i am 57 in a week or so wait, what's what days today today's the 17th and 10 days i will be 58 Yay, i no will way. not mm-hmm, I, I i'm like you know i would like a relationship I, i'm open mm-hmm. to it but i also know at my age what i want mm-hmm. And and I want to find the person or I want the universe or whoever to bring someone in my life at this point that will will compliment we complement each other kind of like you don't want you you're a homebody. That's great. But I'm not going to be right. so, you know, fine. But I just I won't I'm not going to I don't want to settle anymore. You don't don't. And, uh, and I will be permanently single if I have to and happily single. Because Never I'm okay well, with being there's alone. No, there's no perfect relationship, no perfect partner. No. We have to settle in some ways, in some areas. Mm-hmm. It has to be done. We'll but there, are, but there's levels of settling. Right. Like, yes. uh, like I don't want to settle like I, I sometimes do with someone that there's really no zing there, and oh, it's no. just like, mm-hmm. well, they're around. I have a girlfriend. Huh? It's like it's like it's like you know the only thing is oh, and I have a girlfriend. But there's really nothing about that relationship yeah. that really gives you the zhuzh. Uh, yeah, you know? I won't do that anymore. I, I love zhuzh. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, You've got to have some zhuzh. You've got to have some zhuzh. Well, it's all about the emotional, physical, mental, and spiritual connections. Yeah. Ooh. When you have all Give four me the whole connections. Now. I've never had that all four. Right. Mm, mm. Let me tell you. Me like, well, that is the settling, I think. Wow. Yeah. Right? That is the yeah, settling. Exactly. And also the I mean, lack of awareness at an, a younger age. Absolutely. Yeah. But you know what? Right. I won't say younger because that's bullshit, well, too. Because so I, I no no I mean yeah. for me, when I was younger yes when, when we're younger we want that that sexual but I first. was always interested always interested in older women mm-hmm. thinking mm-hmm. 
They have, they, they have their shit together. Oh. They're oh, the mature that, ones. They They've got more. their shit nope, together. Not necessarily. And I just found, I'm nope. finding out going, nope. no, no, <laughs> no. Well, boy, that was shockers. <laughs> that was a shocker. I'm like, oh, wow. And now, you know, me, I'm an older woman now, you know. Mm, you know I is. actually, I mean, look, I'm a little nuts and eccentric, and I, you know, I'm not everybody's, you know, favorite flavor. But, you know, I at least I'm aware of what those things I have to work on and are open to it. But so many women I'm finding as they're getting older, they just don't. It's like they, they once they figure out something and this is who they are, they just stand grounded in it and don't want to evolve and say, take me as I am. And I'm like, right. you know, yeah, take me as I am. But, you know, I am kind of rough around the edges, too. So I want to learn. I want to grow. But, you know, there are some people that will bring different traits out in mm -hmm. you. Like, for example, you know, there's someone in my life that brings out the soft side in me all the time mm. that doesn't ever see the other side. And it's just amazing. And it's just amazing to always be in that feeling. You know, I'd like How to come that person takes that out of you, Roxanne, and other people don't. Is it really them or is it how you are connecting to them? It's we're both intuitive empaths. And I think we just relate to each other on an in such Is a, there a degree high for that? level <laughs> of intuitive empath that n nothing else really comes out but connection. So I was I'm going to uh, pose this question. I for me, I don't know if it's because I was raised in a society where you have your one significant other mm -hmm. monogamy. And then I see, you know, the the trend of people, or maybe not a trend. What well, you know, what I'm saying. There's po po what is it? Polygamy. Polygamy. Polyamory. 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 Mm -hmm. um, there's, we, but they still have their number one partner, and then people, uh, you know, open relationships and all that. And I just wonder how much of it was how I was raised in society to think there's only one person at a time, or how much of it just resonates with me to only be monogamous with one person. I mean, well, you answer that. Yeah. Well, could you be I in mean, a polyam I couldn't. Uh, I've tried I and it absolutely doesn't work for me. I'm not tried. I mean, I just you dabbled. I, I dabbled, you dabbled and I hoped. I tried to make it everything work in that horrible mm -hmm. last marriage. I tried everything and that was one thing that didn't work. Mm -mm. I mean, you know, look, there's an, I believe I don't judge anyone. It's whatever they want to do mm -hmm. is good for them. It's mm -hmm. not for me. I just don't know if I was raised that way. Like, if mm -hmm. I was raised I in a society. Look, I think partially for me, you know, I was raised, you know, Italian Catholic. Mm -hmm. Okay? And there is some of that still mm -hmm. here. Okay? But, you know, I have never done a three. Uh, we've talked. I have never done a threesome. I have no desire to <laughs> and, do a threesome. And it's not Why do you just keep talking so about cute. it. Then? <laughs> no, I don't like it because so cute. no, because it's, it's it's we're talking about this. It's like I never. I've been offered. It's just something that I never. I don't want to either. But um, it is amazing. Well, I wonder who <laughs> has any one of us willing to talk about um, the plus sides of uh, like who's been in a. Mm -hmm polyamorous relationship that knows so more I've about tried mm -hmm. I've tried so I I you know answering for me being a quadruple Aries and ADHD answering to one person is hard enough yeah mm -hmm. but then when I had to an answer to two and then mm -hmm. I had to an answer to three I'm like thruples it, it got overwhelming mm -hmm. and I'm like no I is just thrully amorous <laughs> I know no thruples and, and so that's why I'm like forget it mm -hmm. I would rather just Date yeah. multiple at a time when mm -hmm. I'm single. One on one. Because right. you don't have to answer to anybody. Like, right. you know, you have an understanding. Hey, we're just we're seeing each other casually. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's okay. Right. And you don't you don't owe anyone anything. Mm -hmm. But when you go into a polyamorous relationship, you actually owe them something. Mm -hmm. And you have to talk to them about things. Uh -huh. And that for me, that was a lot, so it didn't work. I found a way to it make it work to me for me. Like you, you would, if you were in a polyamorous relationship, I could be totally wrong. But it sounds to me like maybe you would, I hate to say this, but this is what's coming up. So you guys answer this. That you would really be more connected to one and really love one more maybe. than the other. Well, Probably. that would kind of make sense. But I've never been in it. But Margie yeah. it wants to. Margie's oh, Margie. been in one. so Well, I've been in, in several. And... and I found that yes, somebody, somebody's saying something over there that there often seems to be a two out of three that connect more and one feels left out. That's that's very common. Yeah, or not left out, but maybe just different levels. Just a and different okay different connection. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's really the truth. It's a different connection. But what I found for me is I love being the third in a couple because I have no interest in stealing anybody's girlfriend. 
And I love being able to share, have fun, and leave. <laughs> you want the way out. You I, want that back door. I want. Well, no, I wanted to, to contribute and not have anything dark or negative follow it i wanted it to be that and stay that container you're talking about just the sex act i'm talking no no it was way more than sex it was it was oh yeah you were just the you were the third to a a couple i I like being a third in it with a couple because one of the concerns when that happens is oh they're going to steal my partner oh yeah right and And i would say mara to you i would say this i've not gone as far as being in a polyamorous relationship at all but i did i did wonder whether it might help but actually, in the scheme of things, mm. it's never going to help mm. if the person with whom you are having a relationship and wants to expand doesn't honor you right. and does not respect yes. you. They, I so don't it's think never they want work. to. Yeah, I don't think that they yeah. would want to be honoring me if they want someone else in the relationship. Well, I, well I'm not sure I'd agree with that. Well, she would know yeah, more than I would. Sometimes a couple can grow and, and yeah. just think, hey, this might be fun if we had some, you know, mm-hmm. we're both attract. I mean, this is kind of, I watch people do this a lot. I'm not, I'm per- personally not really, I wouldn't. I want a monogamous relationship mm-hmm. for myself. Me too. That's part of why I did mm-hmm. it that way. It's like, well, I can still participate in this and see what it's like, but here's the way it works for me. And that's core values is what we started talking about last time. And you're mm-hmm. talking about the way we're raised, core values. I value honesty. I value authenticity, which means doing what you say you're going to do, mm-hmm. right? being who you say you are. Um, I don't value sexuality, for example. That's not a core value, so I don't doesn't matter what somebody's sexuality is right and so when we and so religion often is a core value um monogamy non-monogamy that's one of the biggest core values i think is insurmountable for for couples sheena you're quiet practice and tradition for society not necessarily core Mm -hmm. values for many because there are many Mm -hmm. many um what do you call it affairs so are they real they're hypocrites well, yeah, that's yeah. true. Well, sexuality is one of the things that people don't value as much. You know, people don't, if you value your intelligence, being called stupid is a problem. But most women, I'm not going to say all, but most women, it's kind of like not so bad to be called a slut in a sexual relationship. Wow. Uh, for most women. Well, there are moments when I don't mind. Exactly. I know, right? <laughs> Every one of us could possibly think of one moment where that might work, okay? Not a core value, right? But if you call me stupid, we're done. Yeah. Right, I mean, that's not me personally. I don't care, but oh, I, that one I do. Yeah, and a that lot of people. It's a it's a big core value for people. And stupid and fat. That's a deal breaker. <laughs> that I don't care, but stupid. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Sheena, I have a question for you. Uh, when you're dating somebody, how okay. do you know if they're your soulmate versus their tw- mm. twin fl- flame? Good question. Yeah. Well, I think just basically how I described the twin flame relationship is more intense. And it's more complicated. Is it romantic? Um, yes. Always? Yeah. Yeah, but Sheena, my I, first I marriage was explosive. My first marriage was explosive. And I think I think that I mistook all the drama for passion. My relationship now, oh my God, I've got all four of those pillars that you mentioned. That's and there's no and there's no drama. And I'm not settling for calm and relaxed. We really do connect, and oh my God, we are Hey-o. so connected. There's no drama. <laughs> yeah, but well, I, want Sheena, on, 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 on. I want Sheena to finish. Yeah, Sheena. Yeah, I want because I really want to know the difference. Mm-hmm. There, it doesn't have to be drama. I mean, I think sometimes people, um, we have a tendency as human beings when we hear a word, we go to the negative. Mm-hmm. It's complicated. Doesn't always have to be drama. Mm-hmm. The, the key to the twin flame relationship, Roxanne, is you have to both be ready for it. There doesn't need to be drama. You can meet at the same time and both be ready to go and ta-da, and it's done. Um, but it, it has to be, you have to be in the same place. If you haven't done the work on yourself, if you don't know who you are, if you're not willing to to evolve with someone else, then you're going to have a problem when you meet your twin flame. Okay, do twin um, flames always stay together forever once you meet? No. Well, they should. I mean, ideally, they should. Mm. Yes, but ideally, we all should learn all our lessons and do the things we're supposed to do before we pass and go home, too, (laughs) but not everybody does. And that's the thing, when you're dealing with people, there's always that variable, right, of of what spirit would like for you to accomplish in your life Mm -hmm. and what you're actually doing because you're a stubborn human being. And, And each of us within ourselves, right, have the duality of we have a spiritual self, I like to call it our 5D self. And then we have a, an earth self, which I like to call our 3D self. Ideally, throughout each lifetime, we're supposed to get both of those kind of holding hands and walking the same path. But 
sometimes you don't do it. People don't overcome their isms. They, they live in fear. They don't want to grow. I mean, mm-hmm. how many times, even non-twin flame relationships, how many times have you met somebody and started dating and you're like, this is amazing. And then they never call you again. It's because mm-hmm. they got scared. And, and in my practice, which I was telling Gahan this morning, is my practice is probably 90% relationship stuff. And I'm, I'm sure Cheryl, yours is as well. Yeah, um, issues of the heart. Um, mm-hmm mostly that's the situation everything was great and then somebody got scared and i think whether we're talking about love or career or becoming our best us we're supposed to do all that stuff you know find our place in the world find our service find our passion find our twin flame but sometimes people don't want to do the work um because it can be scary and and sometimes people also just want to float through life and not have to do any work So, Sheena, you being uh with Lynn and being together for two years now almost, what's sort of the secret and the key? The secret and the key? That works for you guys. Oh, um, we have an extremely strong soul connection. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, we have the typical twin flame thing where we should have met 20 years ago, 30 years ago, then 20 years ago, then 10 Mm -hmm. years ago our lives just kind of kept doing this yet we had never met mm-hmm. um and so i think we we ride on that 5d connection because you know to get involved with your twin flame and then a month and a half later COVID hits that's mm-hmm. not an ideal situation i mean we were like right up with each other all the time because honestly there was nowhere else <laughs> to go so we haven't yet really had that normal life of being out all the time with friends and doing all kinds of stuff. But, Don't expect you know, it's coming back too soon. <laughs> right. I mean, so, yeah. so that part is coming, and that's going to be fantastic. You know what? That's so amazing. You survived that, which is a very difficult time to mm-hmm. find a, somebody, a partner. I think it's just listen, just listening to spirit and, and listening to, um, you know, the guidance from, from universe about staying together and how, important it is that if you're going to do your work and i think the whole pandemic right and the Mm -hmm. quarantine has forced all of us to do a lot of work on ourselves because for the first time in the world in the history of the world maybe modern world the whole world had time to stay at home and just think Mm -hmm. so we were all kind of working through our issues and working through our isms and figuring out what we wanted and didn't want for our life uh moving forward and then to be with somebody who you are crazily in love with at at that time that's a it's 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 been a ride wow. so I, for us Lovely. it's really about trust it's about it's about staying connected it's about staying focused on what we want um it's about trusting each other um it's about um just understanding that we are on a path and you know, it's hard to trust somebody as your twin flame. Just be, even for me, who gets direct messages from spirit all the time, my human self is still like, I don't know, because that's what we do, right? <laughs> so I do. You can. Uh huh. So did you have that explosion? So my thing is, you can have that explosion, and it's great, and you keep going. It's not necessarily what I thought it was like. I was sure. saying it was drama. You can have that explosion, and it it, it sustains. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't, I, and as I said, um, my theory is I just listen to spirit and spirit tells me, you know, uh, what to do in my own life. And I listen. And I think a lot of light workers give that advice to other people and they don't listen to themselves. Do as I say, not as uh-huh. I do. Right. Um, I, I believe that you, you cannot expect, like somebody said earlier, right? Nothing is going to be perfect. I think Car said that. There is no such thing as perfect. You don't accept someone as perfect. You you accept someone as the other half of your soul. Mm-hmm. You accept someone as, um, and you enjoy the things that are beautiful. You know what I mean? Like I'll t- so so this last summer, summer of 2020, we, we went shopping for a new bed in in Lynn's house, and um, we didn't. You know, we don't know each other that well. We we've never met before we got together, so we don't. We're still getting used to each other, and we went to this mattress store and she literally said, you know what? We should get a new headboard and walked right in and picked out the one that I was about to say, Oh, that one's nice. That you have to trust that stuff. You have to understand that, that, that stuff is beautiful. You have to, um, you have to not 
we, we criticize everything and we try to go to the negative in everything and we try to we fall in love with somebody and then we find all these reasons why it's not going to work mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you know spirit is a mirror right cheryl what you put in you get out so right. if you're always saying the spirit this isn't going to work this isn't going to work this isn't going to work spirit's going to think oh okay it's not going to work and that's going to be the end of it you you have to be grateful and thankful for every minute and it's funny because you know i don't have kids and lynn has three and i love them all so much and with with the quarantine we spend a lot of time here with them um two are at home and and one is with his grandparents but he's here a lot and i think they are the most magical beings in the world and i hear stories from people who are like i'd never date someone with kids or oh you know my girlfriend's kids really got in the way well if you're going to date someone with kids guess what? The kids are going to be a priority because kids should be a priority if you have them. So I think sometimes, like you were saying about trying to make somebody different, we get involved with somebody and then we decide who they're going to be and what that relationship's Mm going to be. And then we get angry because it's not that. Like right. you're not going to get involved mm-hmm. with somebody with kids too, and they're going to be too like, horribly okay, true. Well, I can see my kids <laughs> once a month. And you know what I mean? So you have to be loving and accepting. I didn't think at this stage in my life I was going to have these three kids around that I love. Um, but you have to think of everything as a blessing. Isn't that the most wonderful thing ever? Mm-hmm. That I get to have this experience now with these wonderful young people. You, you just have to think of everything as good. Now, not if something's toxic, Cara, not like your last marriage, not like my <laughs> relationship, which was like Somebody a, a prison camp on Mars. You know, you can't, you, can't, uh, you can't justify things that clearly are not good. But at the same time, you can't always be looking for reasons why. And I see this with my clients all the time. They'll say, you know, well, everything's great except he doesn't do this one thing and it's like wow (laughs) you've got a great relationship he goes out with his friends or Mm -hmm. he doesn't call me five times a day it's like we just we spend too much time thinking about what we think is perfect and not realizing if we just live in the now so much of our life is just perfect Yeah. So Sheena, that could not be more true is it's just challenging to be in the present moment. And when you don't have that kind of living in the now feeling, you are going to judge the past and the future and compare and, you know, listen to the ego sometimes maybe more than what your soul and spirit are really truly saying, because maybe you're not used to maybe listening to a higher guidance system. So you know, as Sheena so beautifully said it, we have to really trust our own gut, you know, and trust our own intuition and, and, and go with those nudges. And that way, when they show up as the love of your life, you know, you're, you're already there. You've already won. Right. 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 Absolutely. Hey, everybody. Hold on a second. Let me do, I have to do something. Hey, everybody. You're watching Between the Sheets here on the United Broadcasting Network. These women never let me get a word in edgewise to promote. (laughs) Um, (laughs) uh, Please, we want you to call in 323 524 2599. 323 524 2599. We're talking about love and relationships and anything else that anybody wants to talk about. Uh, So please call in and thank you again for watching Between the Sheets here on the United Broadcasting Network. So, Sheena, so when you meet your twin flame, it's it is both of you force each other, each other to grow immediately and you either grow together or you're going to separate because one gets scared or you're going to separate, grow and come back together. However, how is it when you meet your soulmate? What does that one feel like? There are many soulmates. Remember that. Well, I, I think it just feels like it's somebody that you know from before right away. And a twin flame is a soulmate. It's like what a, all apples are fruit, but not all fruit are apples. Mm-hmm. A twin flame is a soulmate. So a lot of the th- same things are similar. You have this feeling like you know them from another time. Why do I feel like I know you right away? Um, you can finish each other's sentences. You, you feel very comfortable with each other. You give each other a lot of spiritual space which is important, like Gayanne was saying, with not having to change yourself, not having to give up your friends, being able to be with your family, uh, being able to pursue your passions and dreams. These are all like, I call it spiritual space, where you're not trying to box somebody in, right? You're you're allowing someone to, um, to, to have their room to do their own path and grow. Mm-hmm. And a soulmate will really let you do that, not, not oppress you, um, 
not, you know, I'm so about soulmates because my mother was one of mine. Mm -hmm. And I, I get like, I agree with what Cheryl said about soulmates sometimes coming to teach you something, but you also can have like negative people mm -hmm. can be, a, can, yep. you can have some soul karma with, mm -hmm. or you can have a soul tied to yes. because you haven't worked something out. Mm -hmm. So it's, oh, you can feel that connection mm -hmm. sometimes with someone mm -hmm. and then you're like, oh, this is not good. Yeah. And that's when you need yeah. to just you know, namaste away and just right. back, back off. <laughs> Do you know what's the worst is when you meet someone and you know they're your twin flame. You know it. You know they're your twin flame, but they're in a relationship with someone else. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that don't they know it? I mean, now like, don't it don't is know it. one of the most diff because you know. It's like I said that. I know what my twin. I know what a twin flame is. You do not. You're in a relationship you're not getting it because you're thinking that this person is the end all be all, but it's kind of very toxic, manipulative, control. You just see it from a different thing. And of course, I, I you know I would never be an intermeddler and try and break some. I would never do that. But it's just so interesting that they, because they're in their relationship, fight, fight. It's that struggle where they kind of know they probably should be with you or maybe not should be with you but there's more of a deeper connection or something like a mirror image but they're because they're in a relationship they're not really seeing that and maybe they don't know about the whole soulmate or or twin flame but it's really interesting on the other side to sort of sit there and go mm -hmm. and you got to kind of sit there and wait till because you're not going to like jump in well, there and like you know well, fuck around that was like what sheena was saying earlier is that person may not be ready for that you know she's still growing but if a person that they know that they're similar mirror images and they are like because they're in a relationship mm -hmm. they're in denial mm -hmm. of recognizing it it's just really interesting i'm just mm -hmm. saying it's just interesting i i'm just it's 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 interesting because the person who is intuitive and knows and feels it can't do anything about it. And yes, you have to wait for the other person, and maybe they'll never, Not the ever, time. ever attain it, and it'll be another freaking lifetime. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Say that That's again. Always a possibility. Well, and it's hard when you meet your twin flame and they still have leftover karma with uh -huh. somebody else. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I mean that can happen too, right? It's not always that they don't see it. Sometimes they very much acknowledge it, but. They have they have karma they're working on with someone else and that that relationship's not over yet mm -hmm. and it and it takes time and that's or they're just emotionally not ready and it takes time yep. and and that is hard mm -hmm. you know what do you do step away or just move on to the next or hang on in there I think you just you hang on in there and you work on you and mm -hmm. you um you enjoy your time with the person that you have and you. You do your own spiritual work, and, and you hope they'll come back. It doesn't mean you have to wait forever, because I don't think you do. I kind um, of—oh, sorry, Sheena, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, 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 that's okay. I kind of do have some belief in that whole saying, um, it, what's meant to be, mm -hmm. there's nothing you can do to stop it, mm -hmm. or it, there's right. nothing you can do to force it. If it's mm -hmm. meant to be, eventually what is meant to be will come mm -hmm. to be. That's right. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Maybe that's just wishful thinking, uh, or, or like. No, I agree. No, right. Everything. Teaching. Every the universe has a design. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And but people can mess it up because we have this pesky mm -hmm. free will. thing called free will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we right. can we can ruin something like nobody's business yep. with our free will. Mm -hmm. True. So I guess if you know somebody like your situation, Gan, the the most important thing is don't put pressure on that person. Don't, because don't the pressure change. will make them run mm -hmm. farther. Correct. You have to give them the spiritual space that they need to do the work and come back around. If and they it's, come um, back. You know, because we're everything that we're raised in a three-dimensional world, whether it's in work or love or uh, we're taught to like, go out and get it, get it, get it, grab it, get that job, get that person, make them yours. You know what? That is so contrary. And I'm sure Cheryl will agree to what it feels like when you touch spirit. Spirit is not mm -hmm. telling you to go out and grab anything <laughs> and force <laughs> force anyone to be yours or find some girl you like and lock her in your basement. <laughs> <laughs> we can't do that? No, you're you're tie her to the cross? <laughs> oh, you know what, guys? I have Lynn locked in the basement. I'm going to have to go pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> I got three down there now. What am I going to do with them? Dog food? I can, I can hear her scratching at the, at the wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
when you, you know, when what spirit wants is for you to get where you got to go, do your thing, be in your right place, live in the now, and then spirit will drop the right things in. Do you believe, so, though, that, Sheena, that you could go yeah. your whole life and never, it will never, you'll never find your twin flame mm -hmm. or they won't find you or your love of your life? Like, mm -hmm. like there's no guarantee that you ever will. I, I'll make a confession. I, before I met Lynn, I thought that I was not meant to ever fall in love in this lifetime. And I thought my mom was my primary soulmate and our relationship was my primary thing this lifetime. And I was perfectly okay with that. I just didn't want to get in another relationship that was not great. Mm -hmm. So I was ready to be single forever and had been single for almost seven years mm -hmm. and had really no intention of dating. In that time, I had dated a little bit but it, it hadn't, whenever it was like started to get not good, I'm like, nope, this isn't the one. And I would move on. And then, you know, lo and behold, there you go. Hmm. But I had also done a lot of work on myself um, before I met Lynn. And that time, that time for just me where I wasn't chasing someone, I wasn't always on the dating apps. I wasn't right. always in the bars. I wasn't always looking to date everybody I knew. <laughs> that was a wonderful time because I used to say at that time, I was dating me and I was the best partner I ever had. No. Um, I grew and she had gone through kind of a similar thing. And so I think, you know, right time, right. Yeah. But, you know, like Dan said, I almost didn't go to that party that night. I mean, I literally had been up since like six o'clock in the morning. I drove up back from Orange County. I wasn't going to go. And Lynn almost got in a freeway accident on the way there. Mm -hmm. So there's that yeah. twin flame thing, right? Where once again, it almost didn't happen. Hmm. And we kind of had to push past it with our mm -hmm. free will. Can I ask so, you, as I recall, Tina and Cheryl, I'd like to ask you, and Gayanne and all of you guys, what about compatibility? Hmm. I mean, you have all these, um, what do you call them? Like uh, in India, uh, in, uh, before uh, Jewish people, where they, they pair you, your parents pair you up, what do you call that? Arranged marriage. Arranged marriage, yeah. And they fall in love. They right. didn't know each other. They had to meet maybe once, and they thought, mm, okay, I don't know this person. But because they start getting to know each other and they know they're stuck together, they fall in love. I mean, look like Fiddler on the Roof. But do you love me? That kind of thing. I know three couples, two are from India, who whose parents thought, yeah, you're right for each other. And they're like, okay, fine. Mm -hmm. And they were compatible. Mm -hmm. And now they love each other. So what do you think of that? I think that's a blessing, definitely. Oh, I mean, just, lucky. you know, they came into their relationship maybe, uh, you know, maybe stubborn or hard, you know, hard, headstrong. But, you know, kind of just, uh, you know, trying to push past that judgment of mm -hmm. others, right? We want to not only not judge someone, but don't judge ourselves, which is so huge and can be really difficult. Mm -hmm. So I really think that in some way they gave each other the benefit of the doubt mm -hmm. and maybe did look for, you know, after they got past all the things about being in an arranged marriage and maybe resenting that mm -hmm. maybe they got they got into the well who are you right mm -hmm. let me get to know you feeling and let me get to know me in this relationship that's that really makes a good relationship you know as we you know we need to get to know who we are mm -hmm. and uh and what we want to bring to a relationship right but, but bring but, but hold on but wait but wait it, i don't think the fam i don't really don't think the family saw it i mm -hmm. think I mean, arranged marriages, they're not arranging them because they're going to be in love. Usually arranged marriages have a whole other level of why yep. this family business. is getting, it's business. Okay. It is yeah, not about love or, oh, I think they're twin flames right. or yeah, they could, exactly. they don't give a shit about that. Mm -hmm. But I think because the two people that are coming in to it, okay, they are both in the same, pla they're coming in at the same thing, okay? Yeah. So they're being forced together. Mm -hmm. So one doesn't have expectations of the other. So as I say, they grow, they're going through this whole evolution together at the same yeah. time. Mm -hmm. right. They're growing, they're learning. And I will tell you, I do know people that have done arranged marriages and most of them have separated. Mm -hmm. Me too. So, you know, you, you know, you have two friends or two couples that have worked out. The majority of the arranged marriages I do, they're like gone. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like gone. Because once they do that whole growth and evolution together, they, in fact, come to terms and realize, no, you know, we don't, we are incompatible. Right. 
Well, and even regular split. marriages, yeah. that happens quite often. Yeah, yeah but, regu- <laughs> but, but see, with regular marriages, you, we pick the assholes. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, we go, oh, this one's good for me. I'm gay, you know, whatever. And, you know, that's 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 our free will. These people did not yeah. have free will. Yeah, yeah, too much free terrible. will, frankly. Right. Yeah, too much. So this question is for Sheena and for Cheryl. Um, when you date the person and they feel like a drug to you, you feel like you're flying high and um, you just feel so good and you're just so consumed by them. What would you call that? Would you actually, I don't think it's just infatuation because it's past like the infatuation part, but when you still feel that way past the infatuation part, like what would you call uh, that or how would you define that? I would call that being a quadruple Aries. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it, it, somebody told that to me actually. Um, Who's a quadruple I, yeah. Capricorn? <laughs> oh, wow! But I have felt that way in the past. I mean, Cheryl, do you want to take this? I mean, I will, but I don't want to talk <laughs> over you. No, no, it's fine. Well, you know, first off, you know, when you first meet someone, you know, you are gonna be attracted for different reasons. And if you've been with them for, you know, quite a while, or you've actually cultivated and developed a relationship to where you're actually, you know, helping each other be the best they can be. And that you, like you said, you're firing on all cylinders, you know, all chakras, so to speak, then it is, there is something divine about it, whether it's divine magic or divine love, so to speak, it's like you've hit this uh, higher plateau. But, you know, getting there does take time and it does um, it does create a deeper meaning, a deeper relationship that maybe a lot of people, as we mentioned earlier, might be too afraid to go to. But if that's what's happening for you and you've been with them for a long time where you've moved out of working through the lower chakras, right, and we go into a higher chakra, the heart and the, you know, the divine love and even beyond that, I mean, that just sounds like really, um, you know, a very... Um, a very high vibrational um, relationship, really, where you're both not only looking out for each other's best interests, but maybe you're going out into the world and serving the world in, in some higher form also. And remember, there's soul memory, right? Sometimes uh, your soul remembers everything, and sometimes little glimpses of that, right? Like somebody with amnesia, little glimpses of those memories will come through. If you're feeling what we attribute uh, psychologically, right, and physiologically to pheromones mm. may very be a, a remembrance of someone from before. Mm. And there's just something about them and the mm. memories of their soul that just completely ignite you. And if you're a very open person, I have that same problem. I'm, an, I'm only one Aries, but still, I have that same problem mm. where I get so excited when I'm around somebody I love, and it's not even, doesn't even have to be romantic love. I feel that way when I'm with my best friends that I literally physiologically feel altered. And um, I mean, you see animals with all the time, right? My best friend has this beautiful big lab. And if I don't see her for three months, when I see her, you know, she just runs and jumps and kisses. And she has that memory of who I am. And I think we, our souls have that memory, right? Uh, The only thing is, is that animals um, are very open. We're a very closed animal, very closed off animal. So we're not open enough to allow ourselves Hmm. to feel that. And we also hold ourselves back from all that giddiness and that excitement and that being drunk on loving somebody. I don't know why we do that. I don't know why we feel like... Because we never knew anything else. It's what we were taught from every song we ever heard from seven years old. You know, that it's very difficult to get out of that kind of thinking. Yeah. And it's not good for us. We're meant to love and excel and ascend and enjoy every day and laugh and have sex and eat pie and this is what spirit wants for us so if we're living this life where oh every time i'm around her i feel so happy but i hold back because i really shouldn't why i mean why why hold back why are we so scared to be open now i understand people can be (laughs) awful so i understand but you can't close yourself off or feel weird about those feelings i mean i think um you're a very open person roxanne as aries very much tend to be because we're too new to know to close off zodiac wise um we're very open and we're like puppy dogs right i mean um and so we just get excited when we see people we love and and that's great that's how we should be 
you just have to be a little careful of those who are maybe don't have your best interest at heart. But I, I think that's a pure soul memory thing. It's like when you meet someone and you just know that you know them. I mean, that, that party where I met Lynn at Gay Ann's birthday party, at Gay Ann's 17th birthday party of the year, <laughs> I, um, the, the final, I, uh, I, I spent the whole night trying to figure out where I knew her from and thinking that at some point she was going to ask me some question I couldn't answer because I didn't remember her. <laughs> and I felt terrible because I knew I knew her, but uh, I didn't know who she was. And I'm oh. like, this is going to drive some, she's going to say something to me and I'm going to blow it. <laughs> Be and I didn't have any idea at the time that it was a romantic thing or we were going to date or get in a relationship. I just knew that I felt intensely connected to this person. Like when you see somebody you're very close to that you haven't seen in a long time. Mm -hmm. So, um, and yeah, your body reacts, your body follows, you know, your emotions follow your soul and your body follows your emotions, right? So I think it's wonderful to have a reaction like that to someone. It's a, a lot of times, uh, too, I think we're afraid to be giddy and happy because we think the other person is going to think we're too much. Or right. like we celebrate all this when we watch, see it in movies, but in real life, if we see people act that way, we think that's a little too much. She's weird right. or he's weird. Right. Yeah. Well, my favorite movie, one of my favorite movies is Love Actually. So oh. I just saw it the other day. I was like, oh, I haven't seen this in a while. But it's it's like, you know, look, everybody is unique and individual. I mean, it is. And, you know, we have to take chances. I mean, we do. I mean, I'm not saying like you, Tristan. I mean, um, Roxanne. <laughs> you take way too many. You take a lot more chances than I think anybody should She's just a young normally. one. She's not that young. I'm not that, I'm not that young. I just look it. You. But, I mean, but, you know, there is, you know, I think, you know, as we were talking about, like, with you, Mara, where you're like, well, I don't, you know, I, I you know, is it about my past or my, my the way I was brought up about mm. polyamorous? Mm. Or I think, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know if the way we view relationships or the what we think um, a relationship should be. I mean, how, uh, where do you think we're, we are, besides media, okay, because media is yeah, very influential. Discounted. But yeah. where do you think, what is, uh, what, okay, Sheena, Cheryl, Margie, anybody, what do you think it being in love is? <laughs> what are the quality and, it, and everyone's gonna i'm picture we're gonna ask at people and they're gonna come up with different things but we should ask each what, one of us that this is gonna take too long oh. um <laughs> it's gonna take too long <laughs> but what are like the, let's say two things that and not even about the spirituality part what two things are you dr uh, that you think being in love is cheryl i think joy question. joy is number one by far how you feel inside about that other person and how you feel about yourself too. But it's all about, it, it's all about, uh, you know, that giddiness that Sheena mentioned or that lifting, that lifting of feelings of feeling good, that warm heart and joy. So I'll stay with those two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sheena. I think it's a hundred percent about connection. I think I know it's supposed to get spiritual, but I think it's, I think it's a hundred percent about connection and, and, um, and also your um, the level to which you can sort of I I infuse yourself with someone else. It really is that ability to share thoughts, emotions, feelings mm -hmm. um, with another soul. It's a level of trust, mm -hmm. and it's and it's absolutely connection. Margie, I think that we often mistake in lust for being in love. Mm -hmm. And so I agree with these two women completely that l the true love part of it is those feelings. But I really have to, to say what I see most of the time is we're in lust, thinking we're in love, and that's not sustainable. She's talking about cock shock. <laughs> well, yeah, well, for you. For you. Well, for me, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no more idea. For we're like, you. We're like, what no the fuck is she talking about? <laughs> is talking about that. <laughs> like, Tony, are you talking about cock shock? <laughs> <laughs> not blocks. Okay, so Margie, so right. that's great. Can you uh, well, describe the difference between in lust and in love? Well, okay. Well, oh God, like you, like that. In, okay. For me, you know, love is is a state of being. Mm -hmm. It's not a feeling. And so when I understand that love is a vibration that exists in the entire universe, and I can access that, when I, you know, we, love is this thing that has no conditions on it. It doesn't have my programming from childhood that God's not going to love me if I'm gay. That's not love. That's control, right? And so we have conditional love, which is what we're taught in the world. 
And then we have what's love, which is these qualities that we've been talking about of this deep connection, uh, a desire not to change the person because we're each complete and happy in some way unto ourselves. That's what I think love is, is this connection that's outside of the societal programming. You and could be in love with someone and never have sex with them. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's sure. happened. I've, I've you could absolutely. Happened. I mean, isn't that, I mean, isn't that part of like Tantra? I mean, well, in a way. It's also unrequited you love, which I know very well. Get, get off, no. I think. Actually, I mean, but, but if, if, if nobody else knows more about it, one of the purposes of tantric exercises originally was to prevent men from ejaculating because as it turns out, when women have, we have oxytocin in our bodies when we orgasm, but men have them in their bodies when they're erect. As soon as a man ejaculates, a new chemical takes over, and they no longer have oxytocin in their bodies. Yeah, they have so, football and beer. Right, so women <laughs> want to snuggle at that point in time, and men want to move on to what's next sometimes. This is a big, broad generalization. Mm -hmm. but it, and, and so the purpose of Tantra was to, not, to have the man remain erect the entire day, for example, and the woman to orgasm as much as possible so they could really both truly be in love with each other. And that was what, so that was one piece of what I understand about Tantra. And the other piece is, and, and I le learned this in a class, is the, the Tantric priestesses were there to help the men become human again for their wives between war and going home. Mm. Oh, nice one. And the, so we're talking about red path, white path, when mm -hmm. we look at these things. And so, you know, that was one of the true purposes of Tantra was to, calm the men the fuck down so they could go be with their families <laughs> right not don't go kill your wife now right <laughs> we're done with the killy we're done with the killy right? so anyway, that's my understanding I, I don't know if anybody knows more that's my limited knowledge about that i love it yeah. and gayan what was your inspiration of love the movie for tonight no reason. I like the color red, and it's Christmas. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> no. She's no. looking for love. No, 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 no. Uh, no reason. No, 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 no reason. And love actually. No reason. Love actually. Yes, I, no, it's just sort of like around the holidays. Okay, it's truly around the holidays. Um, you know, that's when a lot of people get depressed. And a lot mm -hmm. of people, I mean, suicide goes up. Mm. Um, and I thought, you know, you know, Yes, it's great to be in a relationship, and if you have it, that's wonderful. Just but just because if you don't, it doesn't mean you're less than or not mm -hmm. good enough. And that's you know that's why it's very important to learn to love yourself first. That mm -hmm. you are not, you know, you shouldn't be like. Uh, there's so many people that I know that they go, I'm not in a relationship, and I'm not happy, and I'm not happy. Mm -hmm. And you know, it makes me sad to hear that because. You should be happy within yourself and not depend on a rel on someone else to give you happiness. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think the whole love thing was because getting into this sort of cycle now around the holidays, people get very lonely. People feel isolated um, or they isolate themselves. Um, you know, people don't invite them places. You know, things like that. And it's like, you know, you don't need to have a ton of people around you to be happy. Mm -hmm. You don't need that all the time to justify you being in a happy, good space. So I guess the thing of love is how do we, you know, people who are out there who, you know, are feeling lonely and who are feeling despondent and who are like, you know, nobody invites me places or I don't I have a partner or I go on these sites and people that like me I don't like them or I don't like anybody and why isn't why are why don't I get 700 people flicking in my direction and and so it's 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 building up con it's it's like sort of a, you have to build up some confidence and trust mm -hmm. in yourself mm -hmm. and learn to love yourself mm -hmm. so I guess I guess the message of this show or one of the messages is yeah all this stuff happens and we all have different experiences but you've got one two three four five six women mm-hmm on you know on a on a panel that no no oh hey no <laughs> <coughs> no 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 but there are seven women on the panel so six well hold on one two three <laughs> four, seven, four five six six, six, six seven, women eight. on the panel oh, okay. six women on the panel that are not in a relationship mm. oh okay right that are not That's in a right. relationship and I'm just as happy mm -hmm. as the three that are. Well, but isn't that because we're older and we've been through a lot of relationships and no. uh, and we've been through a lot of the things that we've been talking about tonight and we and we're just more I don't know picky 
Mm-hmm. Well, you, you know, know we pick ourselves. Um, what I mean is, we pick ourselves over something else mm-hmm. because we mm-hmm. actually are enjoying mm-hmm. ourselves it, more. It's yeah. not picky. It's it's that I feel we finally learned how to love ourselves, and yeah. through loving ourselves, we know what we're not going to tolerate anymore. Mm-hmm. So I don't think it's picky because picky is like a negative connotation. Well, I didn't mean it negatively because that's exactly what I meant to say. Right, it's not. Yes. S- she means not yes. settling anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You see what I mean? Aww, oh, like see, there's love. She's, she's my little she earthquake hugs. friend. Yeah. <laughs> like we're always <laughs> hugging. That's why you need to just sit over there. <laughs> yeah, and you always have to be by me. Oh, let's not go into that now. <laughs> <laughs> Next it's week, we're, next it's week we're gonna. I'm gonna have everyone lining up at the door. <laughs> I mean, no one sits here. Just so you know, I'm gonna have every next one. I'm gonna have everyone like like just be behind the door. I'm gonna go open the damn door up, and then it's a free for all. Yeah. I'm always Whoever right get, here. I will you know be what? in the south of France, but fuck but yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always right here. Just saying. <laughs> I, I'd like to share something with you. Um, I had I was talking to a friend this morning, and I asked her. We were on Zoom. I asked her why don't you have a little Christmas tree or poinsettia or something? And I knew her when she was in a relationship and he emotionally cheated on her. He didn't have sex with somebody else, but he started spending more time with someone else. And now he's with that other woman. Mm. Um, But she's like, well, because it kind of makes me sad. I'm like, but don't you want to celebrate yourself? And it's just a little Christmas tree. You and and B, B is her dog. It's like, no, it kind of makes me sad. And this woman She's beautiful aesthetically. She has loads of good friends that truly love her. She has family that loves her. She has nieces and nephews that love her. I love her, but she still feels like she's unlovable. I could tell that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, love on yourself. Celebrate Christmas a little bit with yourself and I'll come over. And she's like, yeah, but I'm not in a relationship. And like you said, Gay Ann, there are guys that call her and ask her out, but she either doesn't like them or whatever it doesn't work out but i think she just feels like nobody loves me and she has all this true love around mm-hmm. her it just happens not be to to be a man mm-hmm. in a romantic situation mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but well, you have all this love so i i think and when i was single before i met my second husband i really did buy a christmas tree and, and i was cheery and i focused out and i i loved on friends and so maybe sometimes when when people are alone and they feel like i'm not in a relationship they feel unlovable Focus out and go out and love other people. That's always a g- very good mm-hmm. a piece of advice. Just give your time to somebody else, and then you can stop yeah. thinking but, about your own issues. Like, why, do, yes. why do people feel like, oh, I have to be in a relationship or else I'm not loved? I don't when know. Love around not you. everyone feels It's because that way, people but. don't date themselves, mm-hmm. and people have to do the work emotionally. I and only wanted. I really, you know, I don't know if it was bad or worse to date someone who's exactly like me. Either we'd kill each other or we'd yeah, be, the, be my best friend. Well, or both. <laughs> or both. But <laughs> but it's like when you date yourself is when you love yourself. Like take yourself out on exactly. dates, mm-hmm. buy yourself expensive meals, mm-hmm. make yourself expensive meals even at home. It doesn't have to be later. out. I know, right? <laughs> I know. Let's do this. <laughs> Drink that champagne <laughs> even if you're by yourself watching oh. Love Actually. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. And just you know, maybe she needs good. this Christmas to just be on her own so that next Christmas she can really appreciate it when she's in a whole different space. Yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah, and I feel absolutely loved by myself. Mm -hmm. However, I'm debating whether or not I want to decorate because if I decorate, that means I have to take it down. (laughs) That's exactly what I'm thinking. Decorating just started a month and a half ago. But that's exactly what I think. I'm like, oh, I could go buy a Christmas tree (laughs) and then I have to go in the garage. (laughs) I have to Mm -hmm. get the lights. Then the cats will knock all the shit down. And then and then I got to put something. No, I don't think so. I'll go over someone (laughs) someone else's house and celebrate Christmas. I negotiated (laughs) with my brother to buy a small table tree. Uh I've got one ring of something tinsel or garland and that's it we're good i mean for me it's kind of weird and i don't want to bring up the young ones but i don't want to bring up my mom again my my mother so much loved christmas yeah Yeah. it must be and it's hard it's Mm -hmm. it's real this this is kind of hard you know this is this one's kind of hard where you know it's i haven't cleaned out a room in my house yet Mm -hmm. i mean i do it's so funny because no it's okay it's okay i'm not gonna cry um but it was so Mm -hmm. interesting because i never get up in the middle of the night i mean once i'm down i'm down for the count okay granted i don't go down early mm-hmm. you know what I mean I'm, I'm up late and so when I sleep those few hours I'm solid but yesterday I was thirsty okay so I got up and it's funny because I went to the kitchen and got a nice tea and then went and then as I passed 
the one area I smelled my mother. And it's oh. funny because this is the oh. second time. Yeah. yeah. The second time that I've smelled mm-hmm. my mother in the same mm-hmm. freaking area. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, hey, mom, mm-hmm. I know you're here. <laughs> and I said, you know, and I and I went and I sat down and then I just and then, of course, I had to watch the new episode of Dexter because I'm mm. still on the fence whether I like it or whether I don't. Mm-hmm. And um, but it was just really <laughs> interesting. And I, I do find myself for comfort because I haven't like touched my mother's room. I mean, I cleaned it up a little mm-hmm. bit, but like I, like I still I keep the door closed, mm-hmm. you know, because I go in there and I could still smell her mm-hmm. essence. Mm-hmm. Wow. You know, I could just still s- it smells like mm-hmm. her. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm just want to keep this room hermetically sealed yes. for any time yes. I need mm. just a little boost to mm-hmm. remember that, you know. And again, you know, look, I mean, this is the age of, you know, cell phones, video recording. She was on my podcast. I did video. I, I got her on. Fa- so, you know, I I want, you know, so if I'm feeling blue and I want to hear her voice, you know, mm-hmm. I just like play one of those videos, you know, and it's like, it's like, you know, I feel that she's here with me and she is here mm-hmm. with me. But I mean, like, yeah. I'm just not motivated too much. But if she liked Christmas, then decorate, make her oh, happy. Yeah, make Maybe her room decorated. She doesn't want to. I, I just, it's, it's, it's just about the, it's about, it's, it's just, it's hard. It's Maybe okay. next year, but it's I think okay. this year is just really <laughs> kind of hard because it's, you put the stuff up and then you realize, oh shit, she's not here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? of course, yeah. man. Oh, it's whenever feels good to you. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Maura. You're welcome. You're welcome. I got Ooh. that. Yeah. So your mom hangs out by the fridge. That's what I'm she, hearing. You know, and that is the God's <laughs> honest truth. Um, she, um, she, whether she was on the walker or she wasn't on the walker, she was on, as you all know, she was uh, on a restricted renal diet. <laughs> and she I'm was so glad I didn't know that, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> now you do. She, but it may, it's important because I would buy things and, and put things in the refrigerator and stuff and not hide it, but I would hear her mm-hmm. always in the middle of the night with the walker or her walking, and I'd hear the refrigerator open. And she'd always get some snack that she didn't, that she wasn't supposed to have, <laughs> and then go back to her room and, and <gasps> chomp on the snack. <laughs> and in, and so it was always from her bedroom, past the, the dining room, into the kitchen, and then back. And it's that one area that I truly, yeah. that I always mm-hmm. smell yes. her. And it's always mm-hmm. sort of at three, four o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. when she used to make her first or second run. Yeah. You know? uh-huh. And um, she's still doing it. Yeah, she's still doing it. And, you know, even, yeah. and I remember like when I used to go grocery shopping um, and I used to come home, she used to like, like literally speed with her, w- with her freaking um, walker. Walker. Yeah. And like plant herself in the kitchen because it was a chair and sit there. And she'd go, what'd you buy? <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, I t- oh, that <laughs> looks good. You can't have that. It's not for you. I, 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 no, but I bought this for you. Oh, okay. At least you bought me something. I'm like, but my, uh, I do my best. <laughs> but she would always, I mean, it was just, it's funny, but it is it's just interesting at the times of the day and stuff. It's just really kind of cool. I mean, you it's need to put cool. things in the fridge for her. Just mm-hmm. a, leave her a little. See if they disappear. You know, that's yeah. Nice. Yeah. 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 Oh, that would freak me the fuck out. I that would like, <laughs> oh shit, where'd it go? It's usually Kalena though. <laughs> if I put something in the refrigerator, and and, and this is typical Kalena, God love her. Um, she's my best friend, my sister. She's just, I mean, I she, I just love her to pieces, and she's has been there for me, always. And <clears throat> like, I will buy something. Like whatever it is, even cr- like Sara Lee pound cake. I, I you can't find it anymore. Okay, I'll put the Sara Lee pound cake in, and I'll I'll walk away. But then I'm not a big sweet person, mm. but I like to have it. Mm-hmm. Okay, by time I get to the freaking <laughs> week after, it's gone. It's either gone or there's this much left. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, she goes, well, uh, I said, oh my god, I hate when you do this, you know. And she's like. How do I know? It's been sitting there for a week. You were already. <laughs> I'm on I her wish side. I had that willpower. I can't do yeah. that at all. Totally on her side mm-hmm. on that. Yeah, no, no, well, I hear it. I was I'm, like, it's I'm been on sitting her side there for a week. Longer I'm than like, three days, it's fair game. That's my problem. Peter, I, yeah. Do you mind if I ask you? And I don't if it's, know. If it depends it's too on what private, the fuck don't. But go ahead. How did your mother handle, I don't know if that's the right word, or live right like a year or two after your father passed? Mm. Um, they died 10 years apart. My father died in 2011 and my mother died in 2021. So did mine, 10 mm. years apart. 10 years apart. Um, my mother my mother lived after my father died. Bec- I know she, she was there for me. I mean, she lived, she, she lived for me and she didn't want to die because of me. <laughs> it took her forever to take her last breath and hung on because mm. she didn't want to leave me. 
Oh. And I was telling her every day, you can go. Time to go. Okay, time to go. I'm good. Come on. Let's go. Don't you want to see Dad? You've been talking about him since he passed away. You've been talking about Grandma. This is your time. Nope. Hung on for me. Mm. Have you had any dreams with her in them? I have. That's I had a dream um, where we were sitting in my house, but I knew she was sick, but we were sitting in the house, and she looked, she, this was after she passed, and she was just sitting there, and she looked older. She wasn't, like, mm -hmm. back to her youth, but she just looked so beautiful, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. glowing, mm -hmm. you know, and healthy. And yeah. I don't even think she said anything. I think that I just damn, saw that. Yeah. No, that damn 5G. <gasps> I, I think that's a visitation. I think you might have had a visitation in that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, her telling telling you that she's okay. Yeah, yeah. especially yeah. when they don't. Say I mean, anything. I swear to God, I can't wait. Thomas John, thank you, Cheryl. Thomas John You're has welcome. rescheduled. He's coming on um, January twenty first, cool. and um, you know, I, I'm I mean that you know, whether anybody knows it or not. I'm gonna ask him if he if uh, he can sense yeah, my mom. That's definitely. gonna be I, my mom and my dad. Absolutely. Because I li that's something that I like, and it's some you know. And again, just because someone has those abilities, that doesn't necessarily mean that if you ask, mm -hmm. that they will appear. No. They have to want mm -hmm. to come through. Yeah. So we'll be waiting. They're all standing in line. I know. I Look at there's all of us. I mean, how many are gonna be there? But I'm sure we've got a shit ton of people that want you know to talk and. You know, and maybe not. So that should be that's going to be fun. But uh, yeah, but what was did I answer your question? Well, how did your mom handle your father's death? Not good. Something happened. Oh, okay, not good. Um, you know, it was sudden. You know, she wanted to keep him alive on tubes and stuff, and we we discussed it, and she didn't. And, and uh, the the day after we buried him. She had a panic attack and all this other stuff and couldn't breathe and COPD issues. And I, the next morning, literally the next morning, I had the ambulance at my house and she went to the hospital and they said, she's not good. She may yeah. pass away. Yeah. And, and wow. I remember mm. sitting in the waiting room with my cousins going, you know what? I am so bottomed out. I have no emotion anymore. If this is the time for her to go, she might as well. I mean, she might as well because I am, I am emotionless right now. I could take any. Right. I could take anything coming to me right now, and I'd be okay. All right, all right, all right. But um, but then you know, months, months. She had a few months, um, a couple of like a, I don't know how long in the hospital. Then she went into rehab, and then she wouldn't go home. And my cousin um, moved him, moved her in with him. Was she addicted mm. to porn? No, <laughs> not at all. I, 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 I don't even think she was addicted. <laughs> I don't even think she was addicted to sex. You know. <laughs> I think maybe she slept with that. I don't know. I have no idea. She was addicted to four o'clock in the morning snacks. Four o'clock <laughs> in the morning snacks. But no, it's it's hard. And you she know? lasted ten more years, so that shows yeah. how much they love us, actually, because yeah. they do yeah. stay around yeah. for us. Yeah, they do. They absolutely do. My, like I said, Sheena, I had probably the same connection that you had with your mom, and I think we sort yeah. of discussed it. You know, um, you know, I, I mean, my mother and I, we had our ups and downs. Um, but uh, she's uh, with when she's gone. Since she's gone. I'm like, oh man, you know, I recognize things in me that are exactly like her. Oh, I know, isn't it awful? Yeah. And I, you know, and then, and it's like, and now, now, but really, now I'm really realizing it. Oh shit, I am. No wonder we argued because we are very. I thought we were like polar opposites, but instead we were very similar. Yeah, I did not do Christmas the first year mm -hmm. because uh, for the same reason, my mom loved Christmas, and. Um, so I decided to dedicate my Christmases to doing the things that she always wanted to do and didn't do. Mm, that's and that's great. pretty much what I didn't decorate for Christmas until last year with Lynn and the family. Um, but I would go to parties. I would be out with people. Um, my best friend is like my sister. She's got a big family. I'd go to these big family dinners and I'd be walking either in or out of these things. And I would feel mom kind of say, mm -hmm. this is what Christmas is Aww. because we didn't really have a family. And my mom, was. but you're an only child like I am. I'm an only everything. I yeah. have no relative. She was my only relative. Oh, so um, it was always just the two of us, mm -hmm. you know? And um, mm -hmm. I, uh, she always wanted a big family. She always wanted to see that sort of Christmas Carol, Bob Catchett Christmas with all uh -huh. the people around. And we never really had that. So after she died, I went out and sought that out. 
and I feel like I take her with me everywhere I go. Well, and that's the thing with me is like, I mean, there's a lot of people around me, but I'm I like like for Thanksgiving, I was waiting for people to seek me out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I and. And and now I'm like, you know what? No, I mean, I, if, I, if I want that and I want to create a family, I've got to actually go out and sort of make it yeah. myself vocal and sort of find that 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 find that family, find that love, find that, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know. What's that thing called? The Brady Bunch. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, it's 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 hard. I mean, and like I said, every, you know, I'm not the only one. Sheena's not the only one. I mean, we've all some people have lost parents. Some people haven't. But it's. Like, it's weird when you lose one because you still have the other one. But then when you lose both, it's, like, really a odd, strange mm. thing. Mm-hmm. I think you have to choose a thing. Like I have a thing with my parents. I don't know if they're around or not. I don't know if I even believe if they're in heaven. I don't know if they're holding my new my baby. I lo- all that stuff. It's wonderful, and it's very um, heartwarming in a way. But we have a little joke. Whenever I go for a walk, I find things that just amuse me or warm my heart. You know, why else would I have put my hand into a trash can and pulled out a painting of five penises? Why else you would fa- it Where did you find that? <laughs> in the <laughs> trash can. But where? What country? In my bra- in in the Woodland Hills. Oh, okay. Why are you putting your hands in the trash can? Well, I was looking for a lamp. <laughs> <laughs> why would a lamp be in a yeah, trash why? can? You'd be surprised if you can find in the trash in Woodland Hills. The five why? penises. Actually, Cara, What's going actually on? Cara was hoping she'd put her hand in and have a real penis yeah, there available. Yeah, right. Right. Cara, Let me why, feel why, the trash why do you can. associate five penises with your parents? <laughs> or a lamp in the trash can. I don't know. I have, I have a lot of laughs when I go on my walks. I know that sounds really silly. A lot of heartwarming no, moments and it. laughs. Great. And I was like, this was like the ultimate. It's like, oh, you got to be kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, it's on my wall now. Is it really? Of course. <laughs> of course. We'll, we'll picture it next We'll time. see it tomorrow? Yep. You will. Ah. So we'll do a little, we'll do a little, little tour of the penis picture. <laughs> Well, everyone, I just, um, is, are we complete? Does anyone want to bring up anything, any last minute things? I love everybody. I'm I know, I love I'm you. Sorry, oh, everyone. I'm sorry, everyone. sorry if I'm a little difficult at times. It's okay. <laughs> we love Margie, you. Margie, that microphone is bigger than your face. Sit up, baby. We can't see you. There I just want to say I love my kitty. Oh, I'm very grateful what? that I have a baby kitty. Well, okay, three really year quick. Old. We've got nine minutes because this is the Christmas um, New Year's show. Mm-hmm. We'll be back. The first Friday mm-hmm. after New Year's. I don't know what. I think that's, I don't know if it's the third. I've seventh, no, I think. Seventh, I think. Seventh. Yes, seventh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, so I'll tell you what I'm doing just for New Year's. Okay. I hate Vegas. I want everyone. I <gasps> hate Vegas. You're going? I hate Vegas. Wow. I'm going with you. I'm going. Um, wow. And I'm only going because my friend has a house there. And I've, I have I really hate Vegas. I'm going. But I'm going <laughs> because... That's one place that my mother always wanted to go oh, to. That's there wonderful. you go. And I never was For able to take her there because of her illness and travel and stuff. So. Oh. I'm going to Vegas mm-hmm. for my mom. Aww. I love that. I'm and I, and I think she's going to come along with me. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Will you have yeah. ashes in your Roll pocket? Roll the dice for her. Ashes yeah. in your he pocket? He arranged it. No, she's, she didn't oh. get cremated. Okay. Her ashes Jew- is she's not Jewish? No, I'm Italian. I know. Oh. It's so similar, though. Uh, very similar. <laughs> All right, yeah. but before we go, I want to go around the table, and I want, um, what's your New Year's resolution? Margie. Mm. I don't believe mm. in making resolutions, but my year, my <laughs> word for next year is magnificent manifester. Ooh. Oh, that's Mara. two words, but okay. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm making it one big word. <laughs> mine is, uh, mine is. Well, you know how she's going to make it one word? Just put a hashtag in front of it. There you go. go ahead. Well, <laughs> mine is to um, to get my business going with my shoes, like to really expand it and to eventually be able to do that full time. Okay. Um, Sheena. Uh, to live in the now and finally let go of everything that doesn't serve me. Great. Ooh, great one. I like that one. Ronnie. Good one. Well, I hadn't really thought about it, but you're making me think about it. I, I really do want to do things in, I in joy. Um, all the hard stuff, all the to-dos. It's like, all right, I'll do it in joy, and then it won't be so bad. And if it is bad, oh, well, at least I was joyful and giggly about it. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Cheryl? Lovely. I wanted to express... Uh, myself being more authentic. So Mm. I'm totally going to do some inner work looking for a deeper truth. I'm so excited. I'm just looking forward to diving deep. That's great. Great. Um, Roxanne. Roxanne. 
I'm along the same lines uh, with Margie. It's to be the powerful manifester to where I'm literally manifesting what I want within mm -hmm. a day mm -hmm. or two. And that's going to be like mm -hmm. along with the same lines as Mara with my uh, new business and in love. Tony. Mm -hmm. Oh, Tony. I'm going to thrive at everything I do. Ooh. Love Ooh. that. Love that. Hey Tony, Tony, Tony when are we going to when are you when are, when are will you be able to or when we will be able to announce the good things happening here for you and all of us that will benefit from? Hopefully in the next month or two. Wonderful. There's wonderful things coming for United Broadcasting Network and I hope I'm part of it. Oh, yeah. Um Ooh, I want Cara. that gay station, damn it. <laughs> Cara. It's happening. Um, um, I'm I want my own reality show. <laughs> Cara. I want to continue to work on standing on my own sovereignty, but still tickling a few people on the outside. <laughs> I like that. Oh, okay. I like that. I guess you're all waiting for me. Yeah, oh, yeah I was going to sign off please, the show please, and get the please. hell out of it. No, no, no. I was trying to get out of it. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no one will let me get out of it. Um, I guess my New Year's resolution is to... Um, Honest to God, get out of a space where I go for the negative um, mm -hmm. and self-doubt and go for the negative. Because I, I do do that. It's called sarcasm. But there's a line of truth behind Me sarcasm. Mm -hmm. So I sort of want to not live in that space mm -hmm. of spe – I want to learn – I guess you know, it comes down to I have – I'm going to learn to trust again. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I want, I need to learn to, I need to learn how to trust again and have faith yes. in people. Yes. Um, and, uh, and not have like unrealistic expectations on people. So, so you're going to Vegas though, <laughs> right? Yeah. Are you going to trust the tables, baby? <laughs> I don't play. <laughs> I will go Jackpot there. maybe? Or the, you well, know, the I'm going to do those slot yeah, things. Yeah, the slot. I'll gonna, I thought, I think I'm going to take, if I, if we get to a casino, I think we will. I pro I will take a hundred dollars because mm -hmm. I I can't. I said I don't, just, my mother was a gambler and I, I just don't like it. Um, I will take a hundred dollars um, from her bank account mm -hmm. that I still have, not mine, because oh, it has to be okay. her money, not okay. mine. Good Make job. it two. A hundred something. It has to be her money, not mine. She would not want just a hundred. No, <laughs> she'd be really cross right Start now. I know, but that would mean look look. look I would put I, look when I take my money and I go ka ching ka ching and a hundred, mm -hmm. three hundred, whatever. In eight minutes, it's mm -hmm. all gone. Because then I get impatient. <laughs> uh -huh. I get impatient. Oh, just damn, the whole thing. Either I'm going to win it now or I'm not going to win it at all. And then, of course, I lose. Mm -hmm. My mother was always very lucky. So I'm also hoping her that luck. her luck will, you know, will do something. So I'll take about 100 from her from her checking account. And I will go there and play with it. And, hey, maybe I'll come back. With you know two hundred, I love least, it. You know that would be fun. So Make sure you ask her. Yeah, ask, ask her to your do mom. It. Talk to your mom as you're gambling. It's it. like, mom, I'm going to take yeah. out five hundred dollars, <laughs> turn it into the five million once of a lifetime jackpot, so I don't have to do anything I don't want to that anymore. Would you would so hate great. that. Yay. You, you like that. doing. I love would what I do. Would you ever quit your job? Come on. Just no, no what I meant never. is ask her right before you place that bet or before you pull that mm -hmm. slot. Yeah, no, she was lucky. God almighty. She used to put like $10 and get like a, the $1,000 jackpot. I'm like, shit. Oh, I think that's great. So, for her. But Fabulous. anyway, that's what I'm doing for my New Year's. I'm going to Vegas. Go, oh, God, no. I'm going back to Nice. Oh, of course. I'm signing my final papers. But I'm going to be, I'm land on New Year's Eve and I'm going to like put my bags in and I'm just going to walk on the street and just like maybe go for dinner. But. I don't know. Just join the French. Yep. Ho he ho he ho. Exactly. Uh. All right, everyone. Um, I'm gonna go around the table thanking everyone. We, you know, all in one. We all wish you a very merry, mm. safe, healthy Christmas mm. and ditto for New Year. We will see you back here. It's Between the Sheets podcast, the first and third Friday of every month here on the United Broadcasting Network. QTE Brat is my Instagram. Find us on YouTube. Find us all over the place and uh, like the Facebook page. We'll go around the room. Thank you, Margie. Hi, Margie Duran. You can find me on Facebook as Margie Duran or my email, which you'll never remember, HealingQILAC at Yahoo. I don't remember. I've known you seven years. <laughs> <laughs> Mara. Um, thank you. It was, it's been great this year. And you can find me on Facebook at Mara Shane or you can find me at Instagram at Mara Sh underscore Shane or Mara Shane Art. Thank you, Cara Noble. I'm still on Facebook, just uh, <laughs> you know, I'm just like uh, uh, you know, and I'm just about on Twitter. Cara Noble, you know, I'm around. Cara <laughs> Noble voice. <laughs> Roxanne, happy holidays, everybody, and happy New Year. Um, you can find me on Facebook at Roxanne Rosen. That's it. 
And if <laughs> anyone's looking for a job or solar panels on your home, let me know. Thank you. Uh, Ronnie. I'm Ronnie Loiza. You can find me on Instagram at Ronnie Low Life Coach, Ronnie Low Life Coach, just like it is in the name here. And also check out, peruse my Facebook page, Fab After 40 uh, Women's Health and Mindset Hub, <laughs> Women's Health and Mindset Hub. And I really do wish everybody a really happy, peaceful, joyous holiday, whatever you celebrate, whether it's the winter solstice, mm -hmm. Hanukkah, or Christmas. And thank you, Gayanne, for having me on with you guys. You're welcome. Cheryl. Yeah, happy holidays, everyone. You can reach me at mediumcheryl.com. My Facebook and Instagram are at mediumcheryl. Thank you, Sheena Metal. Sheena Metal Spiritual.com. Happy holidays, everybody. Come and find me and let's be connected. I would love that. Ooh. Tony. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> I never call on him because I never thought you had a mic. So now I know. Yeah. Jeez, oh, it's going to oh, be fun. You don't know what you're going to start. <laughs> Where can people find you? What are your shows? Uh, my particular show is Truth Be Told. It's Truth Be Told Worldwide. Uh, you can see that on YouTube and all the podcasts and our website. And pretty much there here on UBNGO.com. <laughs> Well, thank you, everybody. I really appreciate all of you. Safe, healthy, happy. I will see you all. We will see you all in the new year. Um, and, you know, I'm sure, you know, it's too bad there's so many weeks between now and the next show. I know. Because there's going to be a lot of birthday party stories from tomorrow. <laughs> um, also, I have invited a lot of people, and a lot of people are coming. But those of you who have not RSVP'd, you could still come, but it would be nice if you are RSVP, so I know how many freaking people are coming. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, vaccinated, thank you. Um, for the people that I don't know need to be vaccinated. Uh, anyway, I love you guys. Thank you. Be safe, be well, and as always, have a wonderful holiday. Be safe. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.